Welcome, you're listening to The Best of Investing. I'm your host, Edward Brown. Uh, my two co-hosts, Mark Han and Nam Phan, are off today, but I do have a special guest I'm going to introduce in just a second here. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia questions for a five-pack tanning certificate given away during this show. That certificate's not sponsored by the radio station, but by Tan Bella Tanning Salon with two locations in San Francisco and one in Marin, and those certificates are worth over $100, so it's a nice little gift. Today's trivia theme is miscellaneous trivia. Now we have a special guest, Chris Trembley, who's Director of Operations of Preferred Trust Company uh, located in Las, Ve Las Vegas. Uh, Chris, welcome to The Best of Investing. How are you? Thanks. We're glad to be here today. Thanks for having us. Well, you're very welcome. Now, uh, Preferred Trust Company, uh, you handle, uh, you're a custodian basically for IRAs, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. And yeah, so go ahead, tell us a little bit more about specifically what your company does, because you're a little different than uh, some other ones. Sure. So we are actually licensed as a retail trust company, but we do specialize in self-directed IRAs. Um, that's what we focus on. Um, and what makes us a little bit different is the type of investments our clients hold. Um, so you might, we're very similar to TD Ameritrade, uh, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, they specialize in your publicly traded assets, everything stocks, bonds, mutual funds, where we're concentrating on those alternative investments. Um, so we're, we're, we have the same licensing as those um, type of big box, if you will, custodians, um, but our specialties are a little bit different. Okay, because uh, uh, when I think of Merrill Lynch and those companies, I think of ones that are trying to uh, get the investors to invest specifically in their products. That's correct, yes. Whereas you guys don't yes. sell anything, right? You're just- We don't, independent. and we cannot, right. So we can't give investment advice. That's what makes it unique in that realm, self-directed. Really, the client is, is taking control of their retirement. They're making the selections um, of the investments that they're gonna hold in their accounts. A lot of people like this because they can invest in things that they understand and they know. You know, from the other perspective, when you are investing with a TD Ameritrade or an Edward Jones, you usually have a financial advisor attached to that account, right? That's going to help you, is going to look at your risk, is going to help you make and select your investments. In our world, uh, we're not licensed to do that. Our whole, the, the whole purpose of us is to provide education on what you can and can't do within your IRA, okay. um, to hold custody of those alternative investments. But really, the account owner makes all of the uh, selections of the investments. So it's, it's their job to do the due diligence on their accounts. Okay, uh, do you work with uh, registered investment advisors or other? Uh... We don't, but we, you know, we encourage our clients if they have them and they work with them, you know, we, if they want advice and, and we do, we have those clients that, you know, I, I think sometimes that's that a, a misconception is that we're going to provide investment advice. And then once they have their account open with us, they don't know what to do, right? So we're, our job is to educate them on these are the things you can invest in. These are the types of alternative investments out there. If you want to loop in a financial advisor, that's certainly fine. Um, but a lot of times the financial advisors in those big box companies, you know, they don't want to talk about the alternatives because A, they don't want to lose business, right? That's um, money out of their hands. Yeah, you know what though? I, I'm thinking about, let's say I'm a, I'm a registered investment advisor who's charging a percentage of assets. Yeah. Uh, I would think that, uh, you know, because there are a, a number of independent uh, custodians who handle self-directed IRAs. So I might want to get on your platform per se to be able to just say, hey, listen, I've got a bunch of clients who want to do self-directed IRAs, uh, but I'd like to be associated with the account. Do you, do you allow that? We do. We do okay. we work with registered investment advisors right. quite a bit, actually. Um, and yeah, they, they like to be that go-between and, and because- exactly they've built and that's absolutely fine with us. Um, we welcome that. We work with a lot of RIAs. Um, it's a comfort level, I think, for the client as well. Um, so yeah, if they, if they want to be involved, we're, we're definitely open to that. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of minutes before uh, a break. Let, let, we're going to give out your information a couple of times, but let's start off now uh, because I, I'm not sure how many people are familiar uh, with your company, uh, Preferred Trust Company. Uh, there are a number of independent uh, register, uh, IRA custodians, and we're going to uh, see what's different about you than other ones in the next segment. But uh, give out your information if you would. 
Sure. Well, like you said, we are located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, our website is preferredtrustcompany.com, um, but it's real easy to email us. Um, our general email box is info, I-N-F-O, at P-T-C, like Paul, Tom, Charlie, email.com, or they can call us toll free, 888-990-7892. And if they select option one or two, any of the representatives can help them. Okay. How big is your company? How, how, um, how many employees do you have? So we have about 25 employees. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, yeah. one thing that's nice about a smaller company is you probably will get somebody rather than re rerouted through, you know, 14 different uh, extensions. I think that's part of what sets us apart. You know, we don't necessarily want to be that big box custodian. You know, we are that boutique um, specialized company where you're going to get, um, you know, really first class service. That's what we okay. really focused on is when a client calls that they, they get a real live representative. They don't, have, we hear all the time when clients tell us, I waited on hold for four hours. You know, oh we gosh. tested the theory before calling other custodians. and. Wow. So we, we like that personalized service that we can provide. All right. Well, we're going to cut to our first commercial break here. First uh, trivia question is, uh, the U.S. Midwest experienced a severe drought known as the Dust Bowl during what decade? That's our trivia question. Call 888-912-1190. First caller with the correct answer is going to win that tanning certificate, which is worth over $100. Again, here's the question. The U.S. Midwest experienced a severe drought known as the Dust Bowl during what decade? All right. Uh, and uh, let's see, our guest, Chris, uh, is going to maybe answer this if she knows it. Uh, oh, man. Got look on her face like, I think I know the answer. Back to the, the, <laughs> the okay. history. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll let you answer when we come back. All right, stay with us. Okay. You're listening to the best of investing. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Edward Brown here along with my special guest, Chris Trembley. Um, first trivia question was, the U.S. Midwest experienced a severe drought known as the Dust Bowl during what decade? Do you know what decade that was? 1930s. Yeah, very good. It was the 1930s. I like that. Way before our time. Um, I want to make a quick mention here for the Tahoe Lakeshore Lodge. Uh, they have a private beach. Uh, they enjoy their private, beautiful stretch of Sandy Lake Tahoe Beach, equipped with barbecues, fire pit, beach volleyball, pool, and hot tub. Check them out at the TahoeLakeshoreLodge.com. All right, uh, Chris, you work uh, with a preferred trust company. And uh, we, give us a little uh, example of um, what an alternative investment is, because uh, you, I assume you can handle traditional uh, stocks and bonds too. Actually, we don't. Um, really? Okay. No, yeah, oh. you have to actually be licensed to, to do that. Okay. So we don't. We specialize in the alternative. Alternative, okay. So alternative is everything that's not in the stock market, right? So you're looking okay. at things like the most common one I think people recognize right away is any type of real estate. Like you can actually buy rental property with your self-directed IRA and put a renter in there and have the income driven right back into your IRA every month. So real estate is a, is a huge one that a lot of our clients are investing in. Uh, startup companies are very, very popular, private placement investments, private equity. So gotcha. um, oil and gas and mineral rights, um, those are huge alternatives, especially today. Um, another one that's kind of making waves and, and appearing more and more and wasn't really popular until recently is digital currency, digital assets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ethereum and then precious metals, of course, and the actual physical gold and silver. Um, so those are what your alternatives are. Um, so who, who holds the actual gold? I mean, if, if somebody buys you know, $10,000 worth of gold, Mm -hmm. Do they have it shipped to you? I mean, it, uh, who uh, no, it? we're not a depository. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are heavily regulated by the IRS. Um, and so one of the things that the IRS does stipulate is that if you're owning uh, precious metals within your retirement account, they have to be held at the depository. Okay. So work with a lot of, you know, the most popular depositories that are licensed to do that. So 
Um, in short, no, we don't hold them. And then that is a huge misconception of a lot of our clients. They think that we have some bunker below our office. <laughs> <laughs> a big safe yeah. are holding this stuff and that's you know so what happens is that the client buys it and we send the money to the precious metals dealer so they, they have to find someone who's going to sell it right and then we send the money from the ira to the dealer and the dealer then uh, works with their wholesaler to get it shipped um, to the depository basically and, and do you guys provide monthly or quarterly statements yeah we certainly do so we have an annual statement then okay. clients can elect to have a monthly statement if they want, and they can also have statements on demand. So clients are all different than what they need. A lot of times the alternatives necessarily, you know, uh, holding a, a private placement investment won't have a change in value necessarily yeah. on a day. Exactly. But they may be receiving distributions, interest income yeah. that they want to see. So we certainly, what we do is we provide them online account access, just like your regular bank where you can go in, you can log in, you can see all the transaction history, you can see all your investments, and you can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So okay. a lot okay. of different options to, to watch their investments. And one of the questions we have here is investment uh, options of do's and don'ts. Um, yes. So uh, we know some of the do's, you, you can right. uh, do these uh, alternative investments, private placements, uh, mortgage funds, that sort of thing that not trade. Uh, what, what's one of the, what are some of the don'ts? They just want to be super careful. I think some of it is making sure you are doing your due diligence. You know, that that is a huge part. Again, like we mentioned earlier, when you have a financial advisor helping you, it's a little bit different. When you're doing it on your own and you really have to start researching these companies that you want to work with, obviously we know out there, you know, there are a lot of companies trying to sell a lot of different things. Yeah. And they'll pitch it to you all different ways. Um, so it's important that clients really look at you know, the background of the companies that they're working with. Um, look at how are they licensed and regulated to sell the products that they're selling? Um, you know, what are the returns? What are the histories? So I think that's super important that the clients really become engaged um, in what they're in what they're investing in. Um, that way they're not shocked, you know, two months down the road or three months down the road. They really need to understand the type of investment they're making. Um, Do you guys ever come across a situation that is sort of this red flag? I mean, we we know we all know about prohibited transactions. You, know, sure. you can buy your own personal residence in your IRA, that sort sure. of thing. But yeah. do you guys come across some stuff and you go, wait a minute, uh, yeah. we better get into the, look at this a little bit more carefully. Yeah, absolutely. I think from a client perspective, you know, it's it's super interesting in in this industry and and with the with the vast amount of things you can do with the account, clients can get pretty creative. And yeah. you know, um, there are a lot of different, you know, we've had people, you know, own uh, farms and all sorts of different things with their IRAs, you know, but they do get, you know, sometimes you, you do, you have the, the client who perhaps they want to buy a rental property because they want to put their, you know, their son who's going to college wants to live there through college. You know, that's just not something that can be done. But they, but they have to also like buying a rental property. Uh, what about getting a mortgage on it? How does that affect? Yeah, you can, you can definitely get a mortgage. The IRA, obviously there, um, the IRA is a little bit different. Um, so you can't use traditional lending. You've got to go with a non-recourse lender. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, um, that, that's how a lot of them do it. But Fortunately, really, you know, there's a lot of people you can buy, you know, straight property directly without having the mortgage. So we encourage people to try and not do that rather than having that. Yeah, because um, I'm just thinking of that, uh, the UBTI, uh, mm -hmm. that comes into play when, uh, when you borrow money. It does. In circumstance, uh -huh. some, certain circumstances, it does. And in that case, we always make sure, you know, the important thing with that I, I think is important to mention um, with a self-directed IRA is that, if you're going to do these type of things and these type of transactions, specifically with real estate where you're gonna have real property, is that you do have a good CPA or tax attorney, uh -huh. um, you know, that can help you through those things because in the end, you know, you're going to have to defend yourself against the, the actions that you take, so. Um, yeah, so far I've never seen yeah. anybody run into the unrelated business taxable income. I know it's over anything over $1,000, but I, I have yet to hear of anybody uh, even filing one of those forms. I don't know, I don't know how that would uh, come. And it, does, it is up to the client to do that um, yeah. here, you know, um, and so that's what we always tell, get, get with your CPA, make sure you're you're talking to someone who gives you good tax advice, you know. <laughs> All right, let's uh, cut to our second commercial break here. The trivia question is, a male duck 
is properly known as what? What do you call a male duck? All right? Call 888-912-1190. First caller with the correct answer wins that tanning certificate. Stay with us. Best of investing. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Edward Pre Brown here, along with my special guest, Chris Tremley. Uh, second trivia question, a male duck is properly known as what? What do you call a male duck? A drake. Or a drake, very good. I had to look that one up. I didn't know that one. Um, so uh, let's see here, Chris. Um, you know, I, there, there is something I want to ask you about uh, that we wasn't on the list here, but I do want to ask about Roth IRAs. Now, I know that there are limitations. If you make too much money, you can't uh, put money into a Roth IRA. But there was the situation, and I don't know if they changed the law, and I wanted to find out on this, about the Roth conversion. So what they were thinking about, about, well, if you make too much money, we're not going to let you do a Roth conversion either. Why don't you explain a little bit about what a Roth conversion is, and then sure. uh, the update from the law. Sure. So if you have a, a traditional account um, and you want to convert it to a Roth, right, you're going to, you're going to pay the taxes on that, whatever amount or investment that you convert. Yeah. Um, and then basically can build from there in the tax-free environment in the Roth account. Um, I think what's, what's important to remember, when we, ha when we do have clients who, who ask this, you know, constantly, should I, should I convert my account? What should I do? And really every situation, you know, that is, that is the yeah. question of the day, you know, like um, the, really the, the clear cut answer is it's different for everyone. Sure. So everybody's situation is different based on what you make, you know, every situation is different. So we always suggest, you know, again, you're going to go have to talk to your CPA. We had one today that asked us, you know, should I keep my SEP IRA open or should I convert it to a Roth? Uh, I don't know because we don't, you know, we yeah. don't know what's best for you. You really have to, to sit down and look at all aspects of uh, but, but they haven't. They, 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 they were thinking about changing the law, though. That said, if you make too much money, they weren't going to allow you to do that. Is that? Yeah, and I think some of that's still on the table and up for debate. Nothing has okay. nothing has passed as of yet. So, okay. not that if you got the inclination to do it and you're able to make that conversion, now is the time to to be able to do it if you can. But we always recommend, you know, sit down with your CPA, make sure you know. What's going on? You know? Okay, so here's my prediction. Here's my prediction, and I'm hoping that Congress does not is not listening on uh, on the air right now. So, uh, I and I predicted this before, uh, and some of my predictions have come true. Like I, I predicted many years ago that they were going to tax Social Security. This is way before they ever taxed it. And people said, "No, that's impossible." And I said, "Well, think about it. The government always is trying to steal money from you. So, what are they going to do, right?" So. The rule is now that if you've got money in your Roth IRA, you've already paid taxes on it. It builds up tax-free, right. not tax-deferred, right. Right? right? And uh, theoretically, it's never taxed. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm the government, I want to try to steal more money from the public. How can I do this? Because eventually, the Roth IRAs are going to be large enough to where, mm -hmm. I don't know what the, do you know what, roughly how, many people, how much money is in Roth IRAs right now? Don't write off it. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't know, but it, but it's going to grow, right? So at some point, rather than just say, well, you know, we decided, oops, we're going to change the law and suddenly tax all of it, what I think they're going to do is they're going to say, well, you have to report how much you have in there, and we're not going to tax it, but we're going to tax the heck out of everything else you have. Very similar to if you have municipal bond interest, specifically private bonds, uh, private activity bonds, I think they're called, uh, that you, you might have to pay more tax on your Social Security than you would. So it's just kind of another way of sort of playing the shell game of taxing it. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's interesting. I just think there's always legislation out there being proposed. I think, you know, we talk about that in our association all the time, um, you know, and, and we, we look at it and we talk about it and, and then it changes again. As soon as something political happens, and, you know, the atmosphere politically changes, then, you know, you're get, the proposed legislation is going to change. So uh, I think eventually some of that may, may come to fruition. But, you know, I also think, um, you know, if enough people stand up and, and make waves about it, too, it, you know, I think our association has a lot of um, pull in that area, too. We work very closely with them. Um, you know, they go up to Washington and they, they definitely, you know, are the voice for our industry um, and our clients, basically. 
And I think that's that's huge. And it has been quite helpful in the past. Uh, yeah, it's interesting how uh, I've listened to some people on the radio and they, they just totally bash retirement accounts and 401ks and all that. And I, I'm thinking, you know what, if, if you, so, you know, because of, of, of all the taxes you may have to pay in the future, because, oh, everyone knows taxes will go up. But the way I look at it is, if you save money today, that's 100% saved. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a locked in savings. And, and the deferral is just crazy. I mean, I, in, in the old days, when I used to do financial consulting, uh, getting an interest rate of 12 to 15% was not unreasonable. And right. we figured out that if you put in $2,000 a year for five years from age 30 to 35 and stopped, you'd have a million dollars at age 65. But if you started at age 35, you'd have to put in 2,000 a year every single year for 30 years and have less than a million. So, you know, I try to convince my kids, you know, put as much as you can in oh, your right. retirement Absolutely. account, and especially if your employer matches it. In, you know, in, in some fashion. Um, we do. We encourage our, you know, we encourage our clients to maximize their contributions if they can. You know, yeah. we're constantly educating them on how much they can put in based on the IRS um, guidelines and amounts that they set each year and, you know, encourage them um, because that compounded, you know, amount that yeah. you start investing is huge. So we yeah. And, and we, surprisingly enough, I mean, our, our clients do, they make huge contributions throughout the years. It's good to see. And do you handle, uh, you handle regular IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs? Uh, Correct. Do you do uh, any Keo type plans? No, we do nope. simple IRAs, um, you know, okay. mm -hmm, if employers, so specifically IRAs, but yes, traditional Roth, SEP, and simple. You know, I, I used to sell SAR SEPs. And they were so good, the IRS got rid of them after right. just a few years. Okay, you're too young to remember SARSEPs. Okay, here's our third trivia question. In which city does the film Home Alone take place? We're talking about the first one, all right? Because uh, I think mm -hmm. the second one was in New York, but this is the first one, all right? Call 888-912-1190. First caller with the correct answer wins that canning certificate, again, which is worth over $100. Uh, in which city does the film Home Alone take place? Stay with us. The Best of Investing. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. One more time. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my special guest, Chris Tremblay. Uh, third trivia question. In which city does the film Home Alone take place? Chicago. Chicago. Holy smokes. We have someone. You're, you've had a thousand. Three for three. Not bad. I love that movie. Yeah, I know. I know. It is kind of fun. Hey, I want to make a quick mention here also for the Mount View Hotel in Calistoga. Check them out. They got one of the nicest pools. Uh, you know, one of those uh, you know, places in Calistoga where they have all the kind of the fancy pools and, and all the uh, uh, nice. mineral water and stuff. It's just really great. Check them out. Mountviewhotel.com. All right. Uh, Chris, I want to ask you here, uh, what are some of the misconceptions in the industry? Sure. Um, so I think one of one of the things um, people they'll call us and they'll say, "I want to open a precious metals IRA. I want to open a real estate IRA." You know, and I oh, think oh. of that comes from the the sales pitches of the companies out there, look, you know, looking to um, oh yeah, tell them something. But you know, an IRA is an IRA is an IRA. <laughs> You know, if you, if you go on the IRS website, there's no such thing as a precious metals IRA or a real estate IRA. You know, there's either a self-directed where you can hold the alternatives or, or you're just traditional IRA, Roth, SEP, simple, where you're going to hold publicly traded. That's the only difference. But the IRA for, for purposes of the IRS, you know, it, it's all the same, pre-tax, post-tax. Yeah. You know. Know. It's, so it's, I, it's, I know we, we, we yeah. uh, for years because again I used to do financial consulting and, and trying to explain to people where it's like okay we're going to set up an IRA for you and blah, 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 and then they go oh well okay then I should just go down to the bank and do that right and it's like well no but you don't have to go to the bank well but you said set up an IRA doesn't the bank do that well yeah but then they're only yeah. going to let you invest in CDs and, and all that so it's, yeah, right. that's what's great about guys uh, with companies like yours is you're completely independent. You're not pushing one product or another. You're just the holding Correct. tank. That uh, otherwise, if the IRS said you could just hold it in our in our own name, we could just do right. that. But we That's can't. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think that's something too. You know, um, clients are always um, concerned. Well, you know, do I have to? I think they think they have to. If they have an IRA, let's say at Wells Fargo or at their local bank. Yeah. 
I have to make transfer all of my money to you. You know, do I have do I have to close that account? And the answer is no. You can have more than one IRA. Yeah. We, what's most important in our education to our clients is diversification. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket, sure. which the clients do quite a lot. You, know, you want to keep that diversified. So keep keep some money, you know, in in the public in the market, you know, um, and and then do some alternatives. Um, and, and have that ability to diversify. So I, I think that's a huge misconception too, is that I, I can't have more than one. Basically. I thought, I thought the, the wisdom was put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket very carefully. You know? right, um, right. So what, what, uh, what are the risks of opening or having a self-directed account? So just like any, I mean, there's risk to everything, right? Uh, there, no, no investment out there is, is without risk. Um, and, and so I think when, when you're looking at the different types of investment, again, you just have to do your due diligence. You know, you have to know if you want to invest in precious metals, you need to look at what the metals dealer is selling it, the price they're selling it for versus what the spot price of the metal is. Gotcha. Yeah. You, but but you from your to... perspective though, I mean, there's really not much risk with you guys because you're not, in, you're not giving them any advice. All you're doing is being the fiduciary of holding the assets and you're and you have to be licensed with the IRS to be a custodian. That's correct. And I think that's another, you know, that that could be a, a possible, you know, risk is that sometimes, you know, unfortunately, as custodians, we're not all created equal. You know, though we, there is federal regulation at the state level, uh, custodians are, are regulated a little bit differently in Nevada. Um, you know, we're one of the highest regulated states along with South Dakota. So, um, you know, we don't, and we don't all also allow the same investments. Um, you know, for us, we choose not to allow our clients to invest in, in foreign um, properties and foreign co co uh, companies. That's just something from a personal standpoint that we've elected not to do, yet other custodians will. So I think you, you know, really have to look at, are they truly licensed? You know, you see a lot of them out there that, that say, you know, um, that they they handle IRAs and they could just be an administrator. So there is some risk if you if you don't do your research. Um, okay. And before we know. Uh, before we go to another break, I do want to get your information out to the public in case sure. they're looking for a self-directed IRA custodian. Go ahead. Sure. So we're in Las Vegas, um, and you can uh, check out our website at preferred trust company.com. Um, you can give us uh, and you send us an email at info. It's I N F O at P T C. So like Paul, Tom, Charlie, email.com. Or you can give us a call toll free 888-990-7892. And any of our representatives would be happy to assist. Uh -oh, click, kind of close to my phone number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, do you want to go over um, like a, a fee schedule a, a little bit? Is that okay? Sure, we can I think some it. people are listening, you know, and they're kind of going, yeah. okay, this is all great stuff, but, you know, what's going <laughs> to How cost? much does it cost? What yeah, it cost? Does yeah. it cost? Sure. Uh, so we have a one-time establishment fee of $50 to get the account set up. Um, and then really we are, you know, the big box custodians, they're making money off of your investment because they can. They're able to do that. So your trades, they make money off of that. We as custodians of alternative investments cannot make money <laughs> off of the investments that, that you have in your account. So we are really transaction based. Um, and it just based, it's based on your transaction. Obviously, um, real estate, um, if, you're, if you're purchasing a property in your account, the, the transaction fees are, are you know, slightly higher because there's a lot more that goes into a real estate transaction. Yeah. I mean, think about when you purchase your own home, right? And all the documents that you have to sign and everything you have to do. So yeah. it's similar in IRA. So we are transaction based. Um, and then our annual fees are based on the value of your account. Um, so, and it's tiered, you know, it, it's in tiers. So just for an example, if you have an account that's valued anywhere between uh, zero and $50,000, it's $300 a year. Um, and that's really where our, our clients fall somewhere, their average account values are somewhere between 50 and 100,000, really. Um, and, and then, you know, we do have a, a fee schedule on our website that you can check out or we can send you one, but it's all transactions. So if you have a transaction, there's a fee associated with us for us to process that for you. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. I'm glad they gave us all this uh, good information. I'm trying to think, of, is there any other questions that uh, you wanted me to ask you? Um, and you, you, you pretty much covered, you know, the, yeah, we, you, we, the we precious metals and the real estate. Yeah, we, um, 
So, and what uh, we, we're going to have to go to another break here in about a minute. Um, and so, what what makes your your custodianship different than other companies? I mean, you answer well, the phone. I, <laughs> <which is important. laughs> right, right. We do answer the phone. Yes, um, I think the technology that we you know work towards. That's one thing. Um, that we've really worked towards over the years is, is making it user friendly for our clients, um, making and streamlining our processes so that it doesn't have to be arduous for them to make an investment. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, clients might shy away from that because they think, oh, I just don't want to deal with all that paperwork or I just don't want to. So we yeah. really try and, and streamline our processes. And I also think a huge thing about Refer Trust is we are so compliant. That is one thing that we stand very firm on. Um, and that comes partially from the state we're regulated in. You know, Nevada, surprisingly enough, I think people are surprised when they hear Nevada is such a heavily regulated. No, you know what's funny? Not really. I, I mean, I'm not because because the gaming industry the is gaming so heavily industry. regulated. Correct. You know, it's, not, it's not like the Wild West or just anything. anything right. Bad. I kind of figured, no, no, they, they really got their stuff together. We uh, do. And, I mean, we, we, we go through annual examinations every year with the state. Yeah. Um, and they're looking to make sure not only is the, is the company financially sound. All right, stay, stay with us. We have to okay. cut through a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my special guest, Chris Tremblay of Preferred. Finish it off. Trust Company. There we go. <laughs> I have it here. I just wanted you to, I just wanted you to do some of the talking there. Um, th there was... Uh, we, I had to cut you off short because yeah. we had gone to the That's break. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and finish off. So I just was mentioning, you know, um, we're, we're heavily regulated. So um, from a, a state, um, you know, component, um, the state of Nevada comes in and, and annually examines us, make sure we're financially sound, make sure we are following the federal rules and regulations when it comes to um, custody of, of IRAs. Um, and so that that's huge that, you know, and not every state has that. Yeah. Um, and I think from a federal level too, it's it's slightly lax because I think the federal government relies on the states yeah, to okay. make sure those examinations and things are happening. So if you're in a state where those examinations are not happening and the regulations are kind of loose, um, you know, that can be concerning. Um, well, and do you, do you get people sometimes to call up and say, well, I'm a little concerned because, you know, my account's $150,000 and I don't, really know your company you, you know to make sure you're not going to steal all the money type of thing right sure you, you get those of course questions? oh yeah. absolutely you know and we're more than happy you know we're fully insured that's that's one thing that's important to remember and because we are licensed you know the financial institutions division of nevada uh, has a responsibility to ensure that if something happens to us uh, you know that they can um they, they can come in and handle that um sort so of like sipic or, uh, right, it's, a, it's, yeah. right. It's, it's, it's certainly an important part of our regulation. Um, but we encourage, you know, we do encourage our clients, reach out to the to the FID, to the state, and find out. They'll be more than happy to provide you, you know, recommendations or let you know. If, if they answer the phone. Right, if they answer the phone. <laughs> you guys always answer the phone. Well, sure, they'll answer the phone, but we know yeah. you'll answer the phone. <laughs> but they're more, we, and we have had clients do that. So we're more than happy. You know, we're completely transparent. It's, that is one thing that we've worked super hard over the last couple of years to ensure, you know, is, and that, you know, we instill that confidence in our, our clients because we certainly understand it ourselves. You know, most of us are investors at some level, uh, whether or not it's in our retirement accounts or outside. And so we know how important it is, um, you know, uh, to make sure our clients are confident in our, in our skills and our, in our services for sure. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Chris, why don't you give out your information one more time? Sure. We're Preferred Trust Company. We're located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, you can visit our website at preferredtrustcompany.com. You can email us at info at ptcemail.com. So it's like Paul, Tom, Charlie email. <laughs> or really it's always that. easier to say that obviously it stands for Preferred Trust Company, but sometimes it's just easier to say. Paul. But yeah, because, you know, P is in Paul. Right, in Paul. right, exactly. Uh, and you can reach us toll free at 888-990-7892. Okay. And uh, what's kind of, what's great is the fact that you guys are, uh, you know, completely independent. Uh, you're not trying to push one product or another. Uh, you're Correct. just a housing company, so to speak, to, to custodianship right. the, uh, the IRA. And I guess you'll, you'll uh, if, for people who run into the RMD, I guess you, you'll know that because they'll fill out the information with their birthday 
Do you Correct. send out a little notice like six months ahead of time or something? Hey, sure, they get, take money out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we have to, as, as a custodian for it, uh, we're all required, all custodians are required to provide certain tax documents at the end of every year uh, and certain information to their clients, which is, is absolutely what they, they, we do. So, um, yeah, they will know if they're, they're due to have an RMD. They know from our perspective, based on the value of their account with us, obviously your RMDs are, are based on uh, all your retirement sure. accounts. And you, you don't know so, what they have enough. Right, and we don't know if you have one at Wells Fargo or where, but sure. And sometimes if have. there's not enough money in the account, you have to re-register the asset. And that, that is correct. Use them that way. So that is correct. It can get a little confusing. Again, Chris uh, Trembley, thank you so much for joining us. You're uh, here's thank our, you. Here's our thoughts for the day. Why do record stores not allow returns? Because all sales are vinyl. Ah. And uh, what do you call a dog that sings bass? A subwoofer. Not bad, huh? Okay, yeah. those, are, those are the typical <laughs> dad jokes I say on the air here. All right, tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away more free prizes for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown, wishing you the best of investing. So long. Thanks.